is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we'll be glad in it. And so thank you so much for coming today and being a part of uh, our fellowship here and coming to worship and give God praise. You know, we're, we're told by Hallmark and other types of card companies that this is the season we're to be thankful. But we know as believers, our season of thanks is all year long. But especially we do want to give God praise today that we have the opportunity to come into his house. So let's stand if we could. For our call to worship, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Let's give him some praise together, please. to fellowship with each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. So, Lord, we pray that everything that we say and do in this service today will bring glory and honor unto you. And it's in your Son, Jesus' name that we pray. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Take a moment to welcome each other into God's house. Would you please? No touching. <laughs>
So as we come to this portion of our service, it's prayer time. So if you've not had the opportunity to have a conversation with God today, we pray that you will. There are many prayer requests in our community, folks, that are fighting different illnesses and getting over it. We do have a special request this morning. Uh, um, Addie is having back surgery on Tuesday, Addie Gordon, so we want to continue to lift her in our prayers uh, as she goes through that. Uh, I know they would appreciate your prayers. And I know there are many other prayer requests that you have, so let's just take a moment, if we could, and go before our Lord and spend some time in his presence. Church, let's pray. some who are wrestling with issues of faith, health, end-of-life issues. Lord, just dealing with the difficulties of day-to-day -day life. And so our prayer right now is, God, we just ask that we can feel your presence today through the Holy Spirit, that you will strengthen us and strengthen those that we're thinking of and give them the direction they need, Lord pray for your healing hand to be upon those who are dealing with health issues. And we pray for your peace to be upon those who have lost loved ones. Fill the void in their hearts, Lord, with your presence. But Lord, we thank you so much that you allow us to come today, that you allow us to, to come before you and to pray and to be in your presence because of our faith and trust in your son, Jesus. So, Lord, hear our praises and our prayers today. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Giving is part of worship, and so we just remind you that as you leave today, you may drop your tithes and offerings in the uh, baskets by each door. So I'm going to ask if you would stand for our offertory time and begin to think about how the Lord would lead you to give as we celebrate by singing Heaven Came Down. Would you stand with us, please? <coughs> Thank you. 
Take a seat if you would, please. Thank you so much for that. Reach over and grab your Bibles. Open your Bible or your app to Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to spend some time here in just a few moments. We're going to continue our time of worship while you're flipping through those pages. You know the song, and Kim and I are going to sing. We're going to ask you to sing with us if you know it, and I know you do. But we start talking about the reasons why we need to be thankful and the reasons why we need to come before him and offer up our praises, the reasons why we need to gather when the body of Christ gathers for a time of worship and praise. And there are just so many reasons. The song says 10,000 reasons, but we know there are more, many, many more. <coughs> but listen to these words. Sing these words in your heart or sing it out loud. Let God bless you and, and lead you in this as we just thank him for the many, many reasons why we have the opportunity to come and to be thankful for God's rich blessings on our life, for God's mercy in our life every day, for God's forgiveness. I worship your holy name. 
lead us now, God, as we pray and as we work through your scriptures. Would you just guide us, Father? For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Open your Bibles, please, to Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to begin in verse 11. One of the things that we understand about being a believer is that this spirit of thankfulness is something that we have to carry with us all the time. But it's like anything else in our faith. If we don't traditionally practice it, we're not very good at it. So we have to sort of make ourselves think each day, what do I need to stop and be thankful for today? What blessings do I see in God's uh, way of dealing with me? What has he blessed me with? What large blessings or even simple blessings has he given me that I need to stop and be thankful for? And there are so many things along this path that we need to be reminded of. There are things that sometimes we don't even think about. You know, when you flip a light switch and the light comes on, that's a reason to be thankful, is it not? You know, we, we, we've lived without power for days on the end of time, and sometimes that's a little difficult for us in the modern times. That's a simple blessing. God's leading us through difficult times in life. That's a major blessing. Understanding that we can kind find forgiveness through our relationship with Jesus Christ when all we have to do is simply present ourselves before him and say, Lord, I repent of my sins, and to know that that sin is no longer a burden for us to carry. That he removes it from us. There are so many things that teach us to, to truly be thankful today. But one of the things I want to be reminded of is this, this concept we've been going over for the last several weeks about Jesus Christ as our high priest. And Jesus Christ ultimately being that ultimate sacrifice for our sins that we will never forget to be thankful for what he did for us on that cross. Beginning in verse 11, day after day. Every priest stands and performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Now, this concept we understand is this, the Old Testament process of, of bringing these sacrifices and offering up because that was part of their practice. That was part of what they were to do. But ultimately, what we're reminded of is day after day, they went through this ritual and this process. And that's not what was really for us to forgive our sins. That for our sins to be forgiven... We have to look at it from a different perspective. Verse 12, but when the, this priest had offered up for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus, who ultimately became that ultimate sacrifice for us when he willingly laid his life down and was hung on a cross and buried in a tomb and was resurrected again in three days. When we remember that, and when we honor that, and we understand that believing in that is the process in which we find God's grace and his mercy. You see, the priest could go and offer up sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice. But what forgives us of our sins is ultimately what Jesus Christ did for us on that cross. And scripture very clearly says, for all time, one sacrifice for sins. And that one sacrifice is Jesus Christ. Verse 13, since that time, he waits for his enemies to be his footstool, because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. One sacrifice paid for by Jesus Christ is what assures us that in our growing in our faith, in our becoming more holy, when we become more like him, more righteous in his ways, we can only do it through our faith and trust in him. And it's because of what he's done for us and the ultimate sacrifice that he only had to pay one time. There's a song that Kim and I used to sing a lot that reminded us because it, there's a verse in the song that makes reference to the fact that I wonder if every time I sin, I put him back on the cross. And you have to stop and be reminded, no. Because he only had to die on the cross one time to become that ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And ultimately it was done because of his love for us. Because he loves us so very much. You see, it only had to happen once. And in verse 14 it says that he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. We are imperfect. But in our faith and trust in Jesus, he makes us perfect. In his eyes, through our faith and, and believing in him. 
For the Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says, this is the covenant that I will make with them. And after that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. And then he adds, their sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. And where these, and where these have been forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin. I am so thankful today that when I come before the Lord in my humbleness, when I come before the Lord to ask for forgiveness of my sins, I don't put him back on the cross because I know that ultimately the price for my sins has been paid. All I have to do is give my sin over to the Lord. And as the scripture says to us this morning, that he will write it in our hearts and in our minds and that that sinless and that lawless acts, he will remember no more. He will remember no more if we just simply give it over to him. His sacrifice does not need to be repeated because his sacrifice was good for all time. For all time. And we are so very thankful for that today. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter into the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened up for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from the guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with the pure water. If you go back and look in these scriptures, there's a reference to the way. There was a reference to early believers as being people of the way. And it comes from these scriptures that talk about that we are people of the way. And that way is in Jesus Christ. Through our faith and trust in him, we have found the plan. We have found the pattern. We found the direction that God has placed for us in order for us to come into his presence. What a blessing that is. It is, in verse 20, it's a new and living way that's been opened up. You know back when in Easter when we celebrate going into the Holy of Holies in that moment when Jesus breathed his last breath. Remember that there's a, a curtain in the temple that separated where everybody could go from where the holy priests could go into that holy place. And in the moment that Jesus Christ died on the cross, Scripture teaches us that that curtain was torn from top to bottom, which was an assurance for all of us now that we no longer have to have that specific high priest go into that place for us. We now have access into the presence of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are people of the way, that new and living way. And scripture reminds us that we are to draw near to God with a sincere heart and assurance of faith. And that assurance of faith sometimes is tough, isn't it, folks? Because if we're honest with ourselves and we're honest with God, there are moments in all of our journeys when we question and we struggle sometimes in our journey of faith. We've all been there. We talk about being in the valley of the shadow of death. We talk about, we just went through the study with the book of Psalms, and we, we often think of Psalms, and Psalms as being this tremendous book of praise and worship. But if you go back and read those verses as we did in our study, you find that there's a lot of heavy stuff in the book of Psalms. A lot of lamenting, a lot of, of people feeling abandoned by God and, and, and knowing that, that he's still there, but for some reason they've lost their communication with him. They've lost their fellowship with him. We all experience that at some point in our life. But I'm here to assure you today, as Scripture teaches us, in our assurance of faith, He has not moved. He's still there. We just get a little distracted from time to time. We begin to think about other things. We take our eyes and our minds and our hearts off of Him in the daily fellowship that He desires for us to have with Him. So let, it, let the scripture remind us that when we have the opportunity, we are to draw near to him, to spend time with him, to be in fellowship with him, to be sincere in our hearts. If we're struggling, tell him we're struggling. If we're giving him praise, give him praise. But spend time with him. Draw closer to him. Realize that Jesus Christ has become the ultimate high priest for you and for me today. Verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. He is faithful. Maybe sometimes we're not as much as we should be, but he loves us anyway. Apostle Paul reminds us, reminds us that even yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
because of his love for us. And he is faithful. And when he tells us he's there for us, he's there. The storms of life will come. The difficulties we'll face from time to time. But I'm here to tell you that we still come before God. And as we're reminded by the psalmist, that even in the moments when the storm is beating against us, it's in those moments we offer praise to God. Because we know we are not going through it alone. He has assured us that he goes with us. That he stands with us. That he gives us strength and peace. And we have to learn to rely upon him. And let us consider, verse 24, how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Now this is a reminder in verses 24 and 25 of something that's been difficult for us over the last year and a half. Collective worship. It's been hard because we've been here, we've not been here. There are still some churches that are still not meeting in person. There are churches that are meeting in person with different types of perspectives. There are churches that are just doing online. Everybody's trying to figure it out. And there's no right or wrong way as long as they're doing something. But the scripture reminds us that there is an important part of fellowship with each other. It's an accountability issue. When we're together, when we're collectively gathered like this in a time of worship, we can check on each other. We can follow up with each other. We can find out how you're doing, what's going on in your life. What can I do to pray for you right now? Or maybe you need to go to somebody and say, hey, I, I need a favor. I need your prayers. And coming together allows us to do that, to encourage one another. How are you doing this week? How's your walk with Jesus? What's going on in your life? We have that opportunity to come and to, to do that together. And so that's how we spur one another on toward loving God, to encourage each other in our faith. And so when we collectively gather for worship, we come into this place and we offer up our songs of praise and we offer up our prayers and we come and we, we open God's word and we ask it to lead us and guide us and how we might grow stronger in our faith. That is important because it encourages each other in love and good deeds of faith. In verse 25, let us not give up on meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another. And all the more, as you see the day approaching, Christ's sacrifice opens the door for us to enter into a relationship with God. I don't know how much time we have left on this earth. There have been prophecy studies done that have said the time will end here and God's return will be here and the great trumpet will blow here, and I don't know. What I do know is, when I read the scriptures and I read scriptures like this, I am reminded that if he comes today or tomorrow or a thousand years from now, as long as I have breath, my responsibility is to be that living sacrifice for him. My responsibility is to know and understand that at some point he is coming back, and so daily in my journey, I want my relationship to grow. And so meeting together, with the brothers and sisters in Christ is important. And like I said, I know it's been difficult for us over the last year and a half because of, of COVID and we've had to do the best we can, but I want to assure you and to encourage you that it's still important that when we can, we take the time to encourage each other in fellowship. The most important fellowship you and I can have each day is directly with him. And that's through his, our faith and trust in his son, Jesus Christ. But fellowship with believers is just as important. He created us for fellowship with him and with each other. And so let us not give up on that. Let us not give up on meeting together. When we have the opportunity, let's do our best to make it a habit, as Scripture says, of doing. Habits are kind of funny, aren't they? You ever had a habit you've tried to kick? I did. I used to chew gum, bubble gum, and chewing gum, and juicy fruit, and all that stuff, and chewed it all the time. And it wasn't until the doctor said, your jaw's going to come apart if you don't stop, because I got TMJ, and I had to quit medically chewing gum. Now Kim says I grind my teeth, so that's just as bad. But there are habits that we try to stop, that we try to, try to do, because we're going to fix this. But one of the things is I'm reminded that when we do something over a period of time, it becomes habit, doesn't it? Going to church needs to become a good habit in our life. It needs to be one that we continue to do. It, as scripture says, it needs to be one that we get into a habit of doing, of practicing it, of coming when we can, to encourage each other, to let the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit encourage us through our time of worship. And to know this, that as the day, whatever day that is, is fast approaching, understand that Christ has given so much for us and he has opened the door for us to have a relationship with God. That moment when you put your faith and trust in Jesus, you opened up communications with your Heavenly Father, 
And you have the opportunity to come into his presence each and every day. We have the opportunity to fellowship with him daily at home, to fellowship with him in our cars, to fellowship with him when we gather here in the house of God because of what Jesus has done for us. Our ultimate high priest gave absolutely everything one time, and that's all it took because of his love for you. Understand that, folks. One time he gave it all so that it opened up this door for us to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And you get to go through that door through your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So what are we to be thankful for in this Thanksgiving season? How about fellowship with Jesus? How about the opportunity to fellowship with the other children of God that are around us? To be able to go into that place of the Holy of Holies, knowing that He has removed the barriers we give our sins over to him through a time of repentance, it no longer becomes a barrier between us and our relationship with him. So let us not abandon the habit of worshiping and being together. Let us not abandon the habit of encouraging and loving one another. And let's do so with a thankful heart. Would you bow your heads, please? As I think about our relationship and our journey with Jesus, I can only reflect on what my journey has been about. And I want to ask you right there to just think about your journey with Christ. This is not a contest to say I'm, I'm better than so-and-so or they're better than me. That's not what it's about. Because Jesus died for all of us equally. And through our faith and trust in Jesus, this pathway that our Heavenly Father has been opened up for us. And to know that He became that ultimate sacrifice because He loved us so much. So let us get into that habit of worship. Let us get into that habit of fellowshipping with each other. Let's get into that habit of encouraging and loving each other. As He's done for us. We have reason to be thankful, not just this time of year, every single day. God loves you. God wants to be in fellowship with you. But simply you have to put your faith and trust in his son, Jesus. That he is the son of God. That he came. That he lived and died for you. Thankfully that he rose again, giving us hope for our own resurrection. Let us be thankful today. Gracious God, we are so thankful that we've been given this moment and time together to come into fellowship with you and each other, to encourage and love each other, to support and pray for each other, to be able to come and repent of our sins and give them over to you, Lord, and know that you have forgiven us as far as the east is from the west. Lord, thank you for allowing us this opportunity today. And so, Lord, as we come to this time of invitation, if there's someone here today that, that needs to open their hearts to you, Lord, and put their faith and trust in you, Lord, would you guide them? Would you bless them? Knowing that you forgive us, Father, through our faith and trust in you, I pray, Lord, that they'll just open their heart to you today. For those of us who've been on our journey of faith for a while, Lord, today may be the day that we need to come before you. And, Lord, we need to just simply say, Lord, I, I need to get excited again because I know what you've done for me. And I need to be excited about what, you're, what you've done for me. Lord, whatever it is you're doing in the hearts and lives, Lord, I just pray that we will open our hearts to you and be receptive to the message and to the call upon our lives and that we will move as you call. After the service, I'll stand down front to receive anybody, Father, so that we can just pray. But lead us now, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The hymn of invitation is simply the words are this, without him I could do nothing. So as you stand and sing and think about your journey of faith today, think about where you are in your walk with Jesus. And I pray that you have a relationship with him.
But if not, and today he's calling upon you to come, won't you come and let's pray with you after the service? Let's stand and praise him together without him. service and prayer today. We have to do that. A couple of quick announcements to share with you before we leave God's place today. There's a reminder that our shoe boxes, we still have boxes here and in the back if you've not gotten it yet. Um, Ms. April couldn't be here today, but she wanted to remind you that the Sunday before uh, Thanksgiving, which is the 21st, is the last Sunday for us to collect them. So please bring them, place them on the table. We'll have a dedication prayer uh, before we load them up and take them off. And it's a great opportunity for you to give and to share with some children around the world during this Christmas season. So if you've not gotten your boxes, they're still available. And you can also do it online by going to their website. Uh, also, if you don't feel comfortable going out into the stores right now and shopping, um, Stacy and Leslie Ann are taking care of that. They'll be glad to shop for you. Just get them some money today. Today's the deadline. Get them some money so that they can take care of the shopping uh, for you and have a box packed. And you get to still participate in that. Also... As you always know, we always have a big Christmas tree in the sanctuary. We're planning to do that again this year, even a little bit bigger than we have had lately. And so we need your help. You saw in an email recently, we need you to make a donation of an ornament. And we want you to put your family name on it and a date on it as we gather together for a time of fellowship. We'll still have our Christmas ornaments that have been on there forever. But this is a great way for you to help us decorate the tree. So you can bring it starting next Sunday and lay it in the fellowship hall. Uh, and then they'll begin to decorate. We want you to continue to bring it all through the Christmas season, so it's not too late to bring it. If you forget next Sunday, continue to bring it. And we'll have little tags for you to write on there so we know when you gave it and then who gave it. It can be a, in memory of a person or in honor of a person, or it can be that you're giving it for yourself or for your entire family. You can give one for every member of your family. Whatever you want to do, we don't care. We just want you to be a part of this and help us to decorate as we get ready to celebrate this season. All right, any other announcements you'd like to share with us today? All right. Well, thank you so much for coming today, for honoring God. Please take a look at the announcements that you find in your bulletin, and we'll give you praise as we leave this place today. God, thank you for bringing us here today for a time of worship and praise and reminder. Now, Lord, we leave and let us go out and live our life the best that you have given us the power to do so that we can bring glory and honor unto you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. All of God's people said... Amen. Amen. God bless. We'll see you next week.